ages, mankind has pondered the unanswered questions of SpongeBob SquarePants. What was Bikini Bottom like before SpongeBob? Why is there a pineapple under the sea? Now, these questions and more will be answered in Truth or Square. What? I'm freaking out! Coming soon in a brand new SpongeBob movie. Witness the wedding you never thought you'd see. And learn the biggest secret in Bikini Bottom. It's time I told you the Krabby Patty formula. Ah! Don't miss all this and more no. in the brand new movie, SpongeBob's Proof or Square. Lies! Lies! When will the lies end? Lies! It's time for the big one, the younger brother of Atlantis Squarepantis. And let me just tell you, it managed to exceed my expectations. It happened to be worse than Atlantis Squarepantis. I, I don't know how that's possible, but let's see how they did it. It starts with SpongeBob waking up on the... Wait, wait, hold it. That's not how this movie starts. Are you really going to ignore the patchy segments again? Well, these are animated atrocities, and patchy isn't animated. Oh, there is some animated parts to the patchy segments, and the entire thing is directed, shot, acted, and written as if it were animated for some reason. Plus, if you didn't include it, the whole thing only amounts to like 22 minutes. To really understand how bad this thing is, you need the patchy stuff. Fair enough, I guess. If that's how you want to do this, let's start from the true beginning. The first image we see to celebrate SpongeBob's 10-year anniversary is a demonic puppet from hell. Are you ready, kids? The creepy puppet is right, though. You do need to be ready to sit through this mess. This intro tells us where the budget went. Insert celebrity cameo number one, CeeLo Green, singing this redone intro. But honestly, it's the best part of this, well, Wikipedia calls it a movie. And once again, this is why we don't use Wikipedia to make our reviews. Hey, Wikipedia is a wealth of information and lies. Mostly lies. Anyway, after the theme, we get a clip show of patchy segments narrated by Ricky Gervais. This goes on for way too long and adds literally nothing. And today, a mere 10 years later, obviously, 10 years ago I said that. Thank you for restating that vital piece of information. Yes, as we've already stated, this was SpongeBob's 10 year anniversary special, and they pretty much forgot that fact before they even started production. So then we get to the patchy segment proper. Although, I can't actually call it a segment because, really, the focus of SpongeBob's big anniversary special is patchy. You'll notice really fast that the people behind this show have no idea how to write, direct, or shoot something live action. But we'll get into more of that later. So before we even get to the SpongeBob stuff, which starts at 3 minutes in, Patchy shows up at the Nick Animation Studio, he demands to see Spongebob, the guard tells him to wait, and then immediately lets him in and hands him a shrink cocktail? Ahoy! Security, may I help you? Uh, yes, this is Patchy the Pirate for Spongebob Squarepants. I sent him over 400 letters this week. So, does he think that Spongebob is actually real? If Spongebob isn't real, then this is creepy because a grown man thinks that a cartoon character is real. If Spongebob is real, then this is creepy because he sent him over 400 letters a week. I mean, take it to emulate your idol. Where does Spongebob be here? Where is he at lunch? An important meeting. I'm not sure, sir. Getting his boat waxed? Wait a minute. Spongebob doesn't even have a license. Why would he have a boat? And since you've been the president of his fan club for a decade, you should know this! We haven't even begun, and there's already a plot hole. Well, that's bad improv for you. A sure sign that they were making this garbage up as they went along. So, the actual episode begins with the most pleasant sound in the world. A million alarm clocks! This is apparently the 117th anniversary of the Krusty Krab. Keep in mind that Mr. Krabs opened the restaurant himself, and later is stated that Plankton has been trying to steal the recipe for that long. Then we get a cutaway, for some reason. Did you ever want to see Spongebob as a fetus? How about a pregnant Mrs. Squarepants? Well, here you go, all two people with that fetish. But seriously though, this is really weird and off-putting. Especially since he tears out his umbilical cord to start eating the Krabby Patties directly. That can't be healthy. I have heard doctors claim that you shouldn't eat Krabby Patties in your third trimester. Maybe that's why Spongebob turned out this way. 
Ah, flashback! Anyway, we get our first song of the movie, and it's not that bad, actually. Besides going on a bit too long and having next to nothing to do with the movie, it's actually pretty decent. Yeah, too bad one of the most enjoyable things about this movie is stolen from the actual Spongebob movie. Much like Best Day Ever, this song comes from the Spongebob movie soundtrack, which means they put the least amount of effort into making the best part of this TV movie. Speaking of the least amount of effort, we're back to the patchy stuff. Time, seven minutes. Patchy is tempted by his delusions of his pet bird, probably caused by the drug-infused shrimp to look at a Rolodex full of celebrities, most of which the special is too cheap to afford. Oh no, don't worry, they can afford the celebrities, but only if they cut tons of corners on everything else in this special. Now we get the most shameless celebrity cameos that I have ever seen. Patchy uses this Rolodex to call up a bunch of celebrities that the promos promised would be in this movie. Considering this movie was made for kids, apparently, how many of these celebrities would kids actually know? Even I hardly recognize most of these people. Do you? I recognize the Jonas Brothers at the top of the Rolodex. In fairness, this was the best thing they were ever associated with. Actually, that might be too mean of a joke for the Jonas Brothers. By the way, don't remind us of a better Spongebob special in the middle of a really dull part of your TV movie. Patchy, president of the Spongebob Squarepants fan club. Ooh, your mother must be so proud. Patchy, maybe you should consider wearing two eye patches. That way you wouldn't be able to see what's become of your life. What? I'm not sure if he's talking to Patchy or Tom Kenny himself. I'm sure it's a great script. Three, two, one. For me to poop on! Kinda pointless to shit on shit. Zing. If you'll allow me to go off on a tangent about something seemingly minor, but is in fact a metaphor to how bad the patchy stuff really is, the Rolodex footage is loop, meaning that they either did not get enough footage to cover it all, or they thought it was actually a good effect, which it's not. What makes this worse is the fact that this was a pickup shot, meaning they went back and filmed it later. Know how I know? That is not Tom Kenny's arm. You'd be able to see the white ruffle, and it looks a little bit too feminine to be his. Also, the stuff on the desk completely changes. They actually went back and shot this and still didn't plan enough to get the right amount of footage. What's worse is that this short clip is played multiple times. Finally, back to the Spongebob stuff, he tries to get to the Krusty Krab, but is stopped by a line. He circumvents this obstacle by hopping on everyone's head, instead of maybe walking around them, or using the back door to the Krusty Krab. But that would be the reasonable option, now wouldn't it? Mr. Krabs tells Spongebob and Squidward that Plankton is likely to strike on this busy day, and gives some exposition that there is a network of tunnels running under the Krusty Krab, for some reason. Except for the rest of the special, they're all above the restaurant. Either way, they are to study that map. Then we get a montage of Squidward sleeping. No, seriously. What? I have never fallen asleep on duty. Why would he say that? He knows he's a bad employee, and hell, half the time he's even proud of it. When I first saw the lead into this, I was hoping for a montage of Squidward slacking on the job from older episodes. It would have been a clip show, but hey, if they added a ton of new content, it could have been a good clip show celebrating 10 years of Spongebob. But no, this is literally a montage of new animation of Squidward sleeping. What a great use of animation. And to help watch out for Plankton, I've hired some extra security. Oh shit, we're all screwed. After Pat and Opey, you want him in your restaurant again? You hired Patrick? What, you expect me to spend money on a real security guard? No, but I expect you to spend some money on the actual special, instead of bringing Plankton into the special and cutting to another montage of failure. It might have been clever if it wasn't entirely made out of sports jokes. It's not like variety is an important rule of comedy or anything. After Plankton decides that this would be a good day to steal the Krabby Patty formula, like every other day, we cut right back to the Rolodex. Motherfu- Speaking of sports, we get a cameo by LeBron James, because this has so much to do with Spongebob. Wait a minute, I recognize him. He was on gum. But seriously, what does basketball have to do with Spongebob? What, you don't remember? Remember the episode where Spongebob plays basketball? Oh yeah, that was the episode after Squidward tried to commit suicide. I remember that now. Who else is going to be performing? <laughs> Aren't you the modest one? Well, Spongebob for one. Oh, Tom Kenny, the voice of Spongebob? Who? Get it? Because Tom Kenny plays Patchy. So, Spongebob isn't real then. Why the fuck did they let him in? Alright, kids at home, dress up like pirates and go swarm Nick Studios. Note, this will only work if the guard is poorly written. The next cameo is Will Ferrell, being stalked by Spongebob producers on his morning jog. Seriously. You know, it's lazy to not have the cameos in the same room as our star, Patchy, but at least having them at their desk makes it look somewhat professional. Here, I'm pretty sure someone from Spongebob ran into Will, took out their iPhone and possibly a gun, and bugged him until he said what they wanted him to. 
Because I'm president of the SpongeBob fan club Tarzana chapter, and I'm throwing a TV show too, so... Can I watch that instead, please? No, but at least we're back to SpongeBob. Oh, yeah, and there's never been a gag about Mr. Krabs changing the prices. It feels like we're watching a bad remake of a ton of different episodes mashed together. Speaking of bad episodes mashed together, another clip show! Then we have SpongeBob decorating the entire Krusty Krab with toilet paper and condiments. He put more time and money into the decor than the writers put into the special. Then we get a joke about Mr. Krabs being cheap, and then there's a joke about Squidward getting beat up. Besides the pointless patchy crap, is there anything new here? Anything at all? Nope. They make a clip show without any clips, and it still feels like a rehash. Speaking of which, the characters get locked in a freezer. What a lazy and overused way to start your plot. Speaking of that, did you know this episode was called Stuck in the Freezer in Spain and Latin America? Let me tell you that that is a much better title than Truth or Square. What's that supposed to mean? The special is either going to be truthful to the advertisement or give you SpongeBob? I have a theory on that Spanish name. They most likely gave up on the episode at the point of the freezer and assumed nothing could get more dull. But no, this isn't even the main plot. So they get through the air ducts. Remember that they have a map of this place? They bring this up just to ignore it. Why? How is it funny to watch people wander around ventilation knowing that they have a map that they're too stupid to use? Maybe it'll be an interesting character study where all the characters call each other out for bad behavior and learn something about each other. <laughs> Not a chance. Instead, we get a series of worse cutaway gags than Family Guy. Just like Atlanta Square Pantis, they're using alternate art styles to attempt to excuse their lack of effort. Anyway, this is a parody of a 50 cigarette commercials. Forget kids, I get the reference and I don't find it funny. If they wanted to do a genuine throwback or parody, how about actually trying hand-drawn animation like they actually used to do back then? I'm pretty sure Adobe Flash didn't exist in the 50s. So they crawl through some vents, reuse a joke from Wishing You Well, and come across Mr. Krabs spying on every person in Bikini Bottom. Wait, what? Hang on a second. You hired Patrick. What, you expect me to spend money on a real security guard? Yeah, no money on extra security for the Krusty Krab, but he will install secret cameras in everyone's houses, including Sandy's bathroom, which costs a ton of money and nets him no obvious financial gain, his only motivation on the show, and put it all in a room that has no easy way to get in or out of? What? This is never even brought up again! Is he secretly selling pervy footage of the characters online? Where is the joke? What is the point? Ugh! It's probably for Nickelodeon's latest reality show, Life in Bikini Bottom! So Mr. Krabs is a big wig at Nickelodeon, eh? Eh, that makes too much sense. The children. The children? I don't care about the children! I just care about their parents' money! Ah, the fact that their feeble minds are easily manipulated by cheap playgrounds and talentless clowns is no skin off my nose! So Plankton enters the vents somehow, and then the group decides to split up. Mr. Krabs goes one way, alone, to presumably be lost forever. The others go the other way. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Krabs pops back with the group later, but now more patchy. And I am so sick of seeing this Rolodex. It is not a good transition, no matter how many times you use it. This leads to nothing but more celebrity shit. They don't even use his real name because they know their target audience won't recognize him. MTV is less shameless about this stuff. What is even the joke here? He went to pirate college? What, was this all made up on the spot that day based upon what celebrities actually agreed to do this nonsense? So Patchy is trespassing on studio property, dressed like a pirate, thinks that a cartoon character is real, and is now laughing maniacally. This man is clearly unhealthy. Oh, don't worry. The next thing he does is vaguely kidnap Robin Williams. But a worse crime than that is the terribly awkward improv that goes on between Patchy and Williams. Seriously, did the producers plan any of this? Or did they actually kidnap Robin Williams to do this? I don't think this is acting on Robin Williams' part. It looks like he was just caught on the spot, and he's not even trying to be funny. If I didn't know any better, I'd think that this was some kind of hidden camera prank. Wait a minute, I know this place. This is where careers come to die! Do we even need to comment? The movie's making the jokes for us now. When the actors have become self-aware that this is the worst thing in their career, there is no way this can get better. Also, how many shots of Robin and Patchy walking do we need to see? That's what really bugs me. So much of this garbage could have been edited down, but then we wouldn't have the marketable TV movie handle. If they edit this down, it might have looked like a kidnapping. Oh wait, so we get the extravaganza, and we see the guest stars that Patchy actually managed not to kidnap, stalk, or harass. Anyone want to bet the writers of Spongebob don't know who Abraham Lincoln really is? Oh, I'm sure it's great for for her career to be alongside a puppet and a dead president. She did the Kids' Choice Awards too. Maybe she owes Nick money. Nobody cares without her. Wow, look at how they treated one of the few celebrities that they actually got. I can only imagine how insulting this is to her. Speaking of insulting, what do you mean he's not 
are coming, Jens. Now I throw him a television extravaganza and he can't even be bothered to show up! Well, maybe if you put some damn effort into this 10 year anniversary, he'd actually be bothered to show up. Anyway, we cut to all of the other guest stars. Apparently, this guy is supposed to be the fifth best ventriloquist in the world. Well, all but four must suck because he can't close his fucking mouth. Did they even tell Pink she was going to be acting? Every word out of her mouth sounds bitter, like they lied to her and she just wants to get to the musical part. Let's do some practicing! <laughs> because all bands practice in well-shot music videos with already built-in special effects. Despite having nothing to do with anything, it's one of the better parts of the movie. Either way, Patchy goes looking for the actual Spongebob. Then he gets eaten by a whale. Because, whale. You know how Patchy just wants to see Spongebob again? Me freaking too. This is his big celebration, and it's the episode that has the least to do with him or any of his friends. We don't even get potty for most of this. It's just terrible effects and Patchy. We finally cut back to Plankton, as he crashes into Spongebob and semi-friends. Now, after all this bullshit, we finally get to what the commercials were talking about, and why this special is criticized so heavily. You know, besides all the other reasons. Just to recap, this far in the Spongebob parts of this, it's been awkward, clumsy, and pointless. Not the worst Spongebob material, but far from enjoyable. Here's where it gets even worse. At barely any prompting, Spongebob starts telling Plankton about when he learned about the secret patty formula. You see the look on Squid's face as they go to flashback? That just about says it all. This scene was done specifically to turn this into a ratings trap. I mean, most of the other ratings traps like To Square Pants or Not To Square Pants, Best Day Ever, or even Spongebob You're Fired, were just episodes that Nick hyped the hell out of. This episode was built specifically so they could hype it. I know this because they do this multiple times, and each time it's in a flashback that has nothing to do with the plot. My editing teacher always tells us that if it doesn't further your story, you should lose it. By that logic, 90% of this special would be gone. So, Mr. Krabs comes alive through the flashback just to toss Plankton out of the story for a while. He materializes out of nowhere right behind them. Yeah, for some reason, Mr. Krabs is with them now. Like, he has the ability to teleport through flashbacks. No clever transitions either. Just one shot he isn't there, they cut the Plankton, and then they cut back and he is. At least make a joke out of it. What was the point of even splitting them up? A crappy cliffhanger? And another cutaway. Squidward remembers the time before Spongebob came to Bikini Bottom. Guess the joke. Squidward is sad because he needs some excitement in his life? No, that only happens in clever episodes like Squidville. Here, he's totally happy, even though Patrick still lives next to him. He still has to work at the Krusty Krab with someone who isn't Jim. He still has to worry about Squilliam, still has to put up with the people with Bikini Bottom, and still sucks at clarinet. Hooray for having a totally static character with no emotional range. You know what we haven't had in a while? A totally pointless flashback! These are more pointless than the songs in Atlanta Square Pantus. At least those move the characters and sort of further the plot. At least they use the same realtor model from Opposite Day. Actually, that brings up something else. Why are some of the side or one-off characters not in this thing? Mrs. Puff has a tiny cameo. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy aren't in it. Squilliam isn't in it. The Flying Dutchman isn't in it. Why not just have the side and even one-off characters be outside in the mob? How hard would that have even been? Just throw a little visual fan service. It doesn't require much effort. And we get an actually funny joke when Mr. Krabs throws his wallet out of one of the vents. Yeah, it's actually amusing to see someone steal from Mr. Krabs. We gotta get out of here. No! Great, then maybe we could actually get to the plot. Anyway, we learn that Patrick has borrowed, also known as Stole, Sandy's walkie-talkie. And as soon as he pulls it out, you know he's going to do something really dumb to foil this escape. Ah! Sandy's trapped in that box! The stupid one. He's stupid, right? Mm-hmm. Now we get another pointless flashback about Spongebob getting married to Sandy. Now this is one of the most infamous lies in the commercial because people actually do ship this couple. But nope, it happens to be nothing more than a play. Even the way Spongebob presents his flashback is a dirty lie. Why would he say it like that? Especially because Mr. Krabs and Patrick are in the flashback! It's like he did that just to mess with Squidward. We cut back to Patchy, who is sad that his special was a failure. I'm not sure, but I think that that might be a metaphor for something. Patchy decides to show us the outtakes and backstory of Spongebob. Rather than actually show us the interesting story of Spongebob's real creation, we get some unfunny gags along with some bad, bad acting, and a lame old-timey filter over it all. Then they go replacing Spongebob in the opening theme song with all of the other main characters. It wasn't funny the first time, it wasn't funny the second time, and the third one makes me revile in horror of what the Eugene Crab show would be like. I like it when Hans takes off Squid's pants. 
Don't take that the wrong way. But that one gag wasn't worth it for this stupid, repetitive setup. I said that Demolition Doofus wasn't self-parody. This is what happens when they try to do self-parody. They bring up the cliches and do absolutely nothing with them. And then they make it go on way too long. The song is nice, but like the others, it has nothing to do with anything. If you thought the walk cycle in the Lost episode was bad, all of these SpongeBob bits thrown into the patchy junk are that time's infinity. Patchy gets launched into the air, back to the studio, and gets knocked out. He finally gets to meet SpongeBob. This leads to nothing. No comedy no in-depth character study, just bad effects. Patchy's entire story arc in this TV movie was about meeting Spongebob. This is what it leads to? TV movie or not, dream or not, technically speaking, this is the climax. What a load of barnacle. No, it's just me, the guy in the penny. And apparently the writers still don't know who Abraham Lincoln is. Apparently not even Abraham Lincoln knows who Abraham Lincoln is. Then, uh, I don't even know, man. Oh, look, Spongebob. I, I mean, the segment is back. Everyone is about to give up, and Patrick writes his last words, I guess. Then they decide the simplest solution is the easiest and bash their way out, making all this ventilation crap pointless. Also, I love how there are several freeze frames here. At least it's animated, so it's kind of hard to notice. Well, at least they are respecting the vent's privacy while asserting their authority and breaking through anyway. They finally get out of the vents, and because the crowd was too tired of waiting for the plot to start, they've all gone home. We went through all of that for nothing! Thank you for reaffirming this to the audience. Provided the writers didn't give up a long time ago, they finally kicked the bucket here. Out of bullshit to throw the audience, they decide to fill up the runtime with a Christmas carol. What? Why? When? Where? How? I don't even understand this. It's all over after this, right? Nope, we gotta bring back Plankton, who had the entire restaurant to himself for the past hour or so. Oh yeah, of all the plot threads, this needed some finality. It's the only thing in this whole piece of shit that had any closure whatsoever. Instead of finishing off the other plots, we get Ricky Gervais recapping what we already saw. At least there's some variety to their laziness here. We get stock pirate images, stock footage, and clips from the episode we just watched. Then just Ricky Gervais stumbling about, probably without a script. We'll see you at the 20th anniversary. It's, it's 10 years from now. Starting now. Where we'll do this crap twice as bad with half as much money. How long do we got anyway? I'd say we're already halfway there. Halfway there. Halfway there. Halfway there. <laughs> We must keep busy, never giving up. How did I not see this plan was a failure from the start? Being around SpongeBob is bad for my heart. And that's not even the worst part. Supermarket. 